If you're looking for art room organization solutions that really work and are inexpensive, you've come to the right place. Hi everybody. Welcome to my studio. I'm Karen Birchall, Creative Katie. And I am a mixed media artist. I think I fell in love with mixed media because it is so freeing. There are really no limits. You get to play with and experiment with a plethora of items. Some that you've purchased, some that you've collected, some that you've saved from the recycle bin. You get to explore with anything and everything. But as much as I love mixed media and the freedom it gives, the very nature of mixed media presents us with a definite challenge. How do we manage and organize all the supplies, all the mediums, so that we can still maximize their use when we create? And that's why I'm doing this video. In this video, I'm going to share with you how I have organized my mixed media mess you have my permission to steal whatever ideas you want and use them in your creative space. I've linked some of the products down below in case you want to take a closer look at them. First things first, where do you start? Well, we need to start with the things that are going to take up the largest footprint in your space. The work table or desk the cupboards, the shelving, the filing cabinets, the bigger items, the things that are, as I said, are going to take up the most space. So in my workspace, I have two work stations. Both of them are, you can see they're folding tables. One was made by my father and the other one was just one that was purchased. So I fit those in. Now this one that you're looking at right now is my primary workspace. This is where I film my videos. Now what I've done here is I've painted the tabletop to match my decor. Easy peasy. And I purchased glass to cover the entire surface. I measured the table, went to a glass store and bought the glass and I put it on and I absolutely love that. It is easy to clean up. Acrylic paint comes off really easy. I can just scrape it with my palette knife. I love that. I bought a Tim Holtz glass mat, which I liked, but it was limiting because it was raised and the workspace wasn't big enough for what I do. And for the cost, this cost very little more than what the glass mat did. So check out that as an option. This workstation can serve as an alternate create space if I'm having a create date, but I've also set it up as my office area. In the corner, I have this huge cabinet. Again, it was something that I bought at an auction, so it was relatively inexpensive, and it's huge. It holds a lot. Now, this cabinet, for the most part, the contents behind the doors is stuff that is overflow. It is the extra mediums. It is things that I do not do not use on a regular basis. Now, one of the things I said is that we want to have our mixed media stash, our supplies, easily accessible. So in here, while I've pretty much put things in here that I do not use on a regular basis, because it's so deep, things that I use the most frequently out of this cabinet are closer to the front, like my varnish, like my gel printing stuff, the mark making tools. So those are 
easily accessible and quickly. I don't have to take out three, four things to get to them. While some of the stuff that's in the back, I may have to, but I'm not accessing those too frequently. And then everything is labeled so I know what's in every container. So when I do go in there and start pulling things out, I don't have to open up every container to find what's inside. Labeling, we'll talk more about later, but it really saves a lot of time. Another big item is a filing cabinet. Now check out places like the ReStore, thrift stores. You can often get these of different sizes and dimensions very inexpensively. Don't worry about the color. This was a can of spray paint went on here to turn it into something that fits into my space. Then I have a little cabinet that holds my printer. So I can print off my sentiments, I can print off printables, photos, print on tissue paper, it's handy, close at hand. And then I have more storage down below for paper supplies, for office supplies as well. So now that we've talked about the largest items, the next largest item and really for bang for buck, I completely and highly recommend them, the rolling carts. Whether they come from Ikea, Home Depot, Canadian Tire, Michaels, what have you, they are a absolute must have in the craft room. They are on wheels, so you can move them around. So if you don't have a dedicated space, you can move it to the temporary space and then move it back to your dining room table with ease. They also hold a lot of product. And as you're going to see, the other storage solutions that I'm going to recommend fit nicely in them to really maximize the usability of them. So not all carts are created equal though. I have found that the ones at Michael's are maybe a little smaller. They're uh, definitely lighter weight, not as durable as the Ikea carts or the carts that I was able to source at home reno places. The other thing that is worth mentioning here is that some carts, like the blue one here, this one's from Ikea, have three shelves, which you can adjust somewhat. This one has four floors and it's a little bit larger. So measure the cart, pay attention to the measurements, check out how many shelves it has. If it has another shelf, you are getting a lot more storage for the same footprint in your space. With my carts, again, accessibility is what we're going for. So the things that are on the top tiers are things that I use most frequently. As I go down to the bottom tiers, I use less frequently. I'm not accessing it as much. So now that we have the biggest or what I call structural storage items in place, now we're going to move towards what I call the supporting storage solutions. And really, this is where we really achieve the goal of having everything that we want at our fingertips to maximize its usability and accessibility. But before you head to Dollar Tree or the container store or wherever you're going to shop for containers, you need to do one thing first. And this is gonna save you money because you're not gonna buy storage containers that you don't need. It's also going to help you focus and make the right choices for the storage solutions. And that is you need to declutter. You need to touch every item in your space. You need to sort like with like. 
you need to purge, rehome some of that stuff, donate it. There's no point in buying storage containers to store stuff that you're never going to use. So ask yourself the hard questions, get rid of your stuff, sort it out, and then you can see how much of this you have, how much of this you have. And now you can go and source out the appropriate size container or storage solution for not only the product that you have, but how much of that product you have. As you'll see at the end of the video when I do the whole tour, you're going to see that I have lots of bins used in my studio to maximize the accessibility of the products and things that I need to use when I'm creating my mixed media art. But in all essence, there are three, maybe four types of bins. And I like to avoid the one-offs where you have one type of storage container and that's it. I like to have more of the same kind that can be used in multiple places. So I can use it in the big storage cupboard and it fits on my rolling carts and it fits in my printer stand and it fits in my space. I find that just makes it all the more cohesive. It looks a little neater because you're, you have some of that similarity or sameness. One of the things that I want out of these supporting storage solutions is that they work together. So maybe it's a bin inside of a bin or the plastic envelope fits inside the bin, goes inside the Ikea cart. So you have levels of organization. This allows you to subdivide things to some degree, which is going to pay off tenfold down the road when you are trying to find them and when you are trying to put them away. It's just going to save you a lot of time. So you know what you need to store, you know what you want to organize, how much of something that you have, and now you're headed to go and find the bins that are going to do that first level of storage solutions. Here's what you can do to help yourself. So when you are shopping for bins, you want to know, do they fit the shelves, the cupboards, the drawers that you want them to go into? So for instance, this IKEA cart, I am at the store and I want to know, will this fit? Is it wide enough? How many will fit? How many do I need to buy? And the reason you need to know that is because many of the dollar stores, you cannot return them or you can only exchange. So ask what their policy is so you're aware, so you're not stuck. And then do this trick to help yourself out. Get some packing paper, wrapping paper that you have excess of, the brown paper that's in Amazon packages, and put it in or on the shelf in the cupboard to get basically a template of it. Now I'm not going to go through the whole process, but you get the idea. I want to know basically the shape, the size of my Ikea cart shelves. So once I've cut it out, I now have a template and I can mark this Ikea cart that I can just fold up, take to the store, and then experiment with the bins that they have to see what works so I can figure out how many I need so I'm not wasting trips and not wasting money. Then when you're at the store, you can put this on the floor, grab the bins, and I can see that three of these are going to fit on there nicely. Then I know that two of these will fit in there, and I can swap them out, play with combinations. That's not going to fit that way. So if I have this one 
if it goes this way, then I can put one of these, but then we have dead space here. I want to avoid as much as possible dead space, or I might want to put a third item. So I'm just playing with the possibilities. So while I don't want to break the bank and spend a lot of money on my storage containers, I also don't want to buy things that are not sturdy enough and aren't going to last as long as I need them to last. They need to be sturdy. If I'm putting paints in them, if, you know, there's a weight there. So here is a mistake that I made. I love these, but they are flimsy. They are not going to last as long if I put some paints in this or some of my mediums in here. So this was a miss buy for me. Now I've reused this in other places. You can selectively put things that are lighter in here. Um, also have, you know, put bins inside of bins where the sturdiness maybe isn't nece as necessary. So you can still play with it and make it work. But when you're buying it, you know, opt for things that are sturdy. Look at them. If you're buying at the Dollar Tree or Dollarama or Dollar Stores, you know, take a look and see, look over each one because it is the Dollar Tree and maybe the quality control isn't there. So, you know, just maximize your dollars by being a little bit more careful. You want some of your store solutions to work together with other bins. You might have a bin inside of a bin or a plastic envelope inside that. So when you're going to shop for containers and you're making those decisions, take those containers with you. So one of the things that I use are these plastic envelopes. Love these. We'll talk more about them. But I'm going to take a handful of them so I can try them out. They work in this bin. They do not work in this bin. How many can I fit in here? How many do I need to store? So this is going to inform my choices. Here's another example. These are storage bins that I got at Dollar Tree that I love. And I'll link that video where I talk about all its usability. But they will fit into here perfectly. Three of them fit in comfortably, maybe a fourth one. But this is all my letter stamps. So I can have that all together. And then because it's in the bin, I can just grab this off of one of the lower shelves of my Ikea cart. And I'm good to go. I also want to avoid one-offs. I don't want one system or one storage container to be only used for one item or one place in my studio as much as I can avoid that. So we've talked about these. Now these fit on my shoe rack that sits on my work table. They also fit in my drawer for my office supplies and they also fit for my letter stamps on the IKEA cart in that bin. So that as a storage solution really works for me because that gives me flexibility. I can use it in multiple places in my studio on different shelves, on different um, larger storage solutions, definite win. So one other thing that I look for when selecting bins to increase the flexibility and usability in my creative space is something that has a hole. This allows me to use it with these over the counter, over the cupboard, towel bars that you can also get at Dollar Tree. Now you pull these apart, they come completely apart, which then you can put together. Through the bin. Now this opens up a whole lot more options and allows you to use your vertical space in your studio. These are art shelves. 
display shelves. And while these ones have been made by my husband and I paint it to go with the decor, you can get these from Ikea. That's where this one came from. I've also seen them on Amazon. And what that shelf allows you to do is utilize vertical space. So I'm using the art shelf to put, well, my art, my art journals. I'm putting up bright colored pages. I can swap out my art, change it over time without putting holes in the wall. So that is a win. I'm getting inspiration, I'm getting color, I'm around my art, it, it's my happy place. But we can also use that art shelf to hang these over the cupboard towel bars with the baskets and increase the amount of things that we can have at our fingertips. So here we have different size bins holding different products that are, these are right in front of my workspace. Then I have some bins here, again, a different kind of bin, but it has the hole and it hangs on the workspace. It allows me to put it on this cupboard door so I can add a bin and storage of something here. It even hangs on the filing cabinet. It can also be hung on your rolling carts on either side of it. So just think of how many more products you can store on that rolling cart. Here's one of my favorite storage solutions. These plastic envelopes that I get from Amazon. Now these ones measure 10 and a quarter inches by 7, which is 26 centimeters by 18. And I love this size. Although they do come in a larger size, nine and a quarter by 13 or 23 centimeters by 33. Now I like that they have a place that you can put a label in, although you'll notice that I have used my labeler to label them in a different place. And we'll talk about that later, but I love these. Now, Earlier I mentioned I don't want a storage system that's a one-off. I want to be able to use the same storage solution for several things in my studio and this really fits the bill. This one I put my sentiments in here. When I print off a sheet of sentiments from one of my sentiment packs and I use one and the leftovers can go in there. This allows me to subdivide them and then if I'm looking for something from my Winged Wonders, it's all here and as you can see it's fitting into one of those Dollar Tree bins that I took to the store and I made sure that it fits these envelopes. What else do I use them for? I use them to store my stamps. Now here they are at the top of one of my Ikea carts. Here they fit on this side and over here they're in a bin to support and it fits perfectly in there. I also use it to keep small amounts of tissue paper, ephemera, book paper, rice paper, different ephemeras. This keeps it close at hand. And again, when I do the overall tour, you're going to see where exactly this fits in amongst all the structures. The other thing that I do is I put it into the hanging files that go into my filing cabinet. So you see again how we are layering for small amounts for the tiny pieces of collage papers. So I keep one of those in there. So I love it when a storage solution works for a variety of things. So I just buy them, you get 24 at a time, and then I know I can use them for a variety of things in my studio. Those larger envelopes, they fit in my filing cabinet. They have larger things that maybe I'm not accessing as much. Some of my scrapbook papers, I've labeled them and they sit in my 
filing cabinet. I use binders, three ring binders, to store my napkins and my printables. And I store it in this big cupboard that down below we talked about being kind of storage of things that I don't access lots. lots. But I do access this a lot. My All my napkins, they are subdivided, labeled, categorized in what makes sense to me, and they're easy to access at the top of this cabinet. Inside the binder, I use page protectors. This is another thing that I buy in bulk off Amazon. In fact, this is an Amazon basic, and I keep these at the ready because I use them, again, so much. So I buy the page protectors in bulk because I am constantly using them for my napkin storage, for my printable storage. Now, in combination with the binder, it allows me to, if I have some more daffodil napkins that I just got from ninniesnapkins.com, I can just add it in onto the next page provider and put it exactly where it needs to be. Easy peasy. When I go to create, I can just take out the whole daffodil page out of the binder, keep it on my work table, and then when I have leftover napkins, I can just put it back and I know where it goes. So making it easier for you to find it, get inspiration and put it away, definite win. You can also use the page protectors to store stencils. You can store ephemera in there. It just helps you subdivide it in a very quick, easy and relatively inexpensive way. And again, you're using the same storage system in multiple places. So similar to the page protectors are these organizational books. And I got these at Dollarama in Canada, but often they will be carried at Dollar Tree, at Walmart. So look around because it is a win. And basically they have page protectors in there that are already coiled. And so I've put stencils in there, as you can see. So whether you use the page protectors and you buy your own binder or you get something that's coiled like this and utilize it, it's a win. I just love this because this allows me to easily flip through and find the perfect stencil for my project. So this filing system I picked up at Walmart and I thought it was very cool because it has like little pouches in here and it kind of accordions out. Now once I started using it it was very flimsy sitting on the desktop by itself and so I wasn't really using it I wasn't really maximizing it but I never throw any organizational system out. I keep trying to think how can I make this work in my space. And here's how I made this work as I was preparing actually for this video. If I put it into one of the Dollar Tree bins, it allows it to open up enough and that gives it enough stability. So what I'm doing in here, I'm putting those plastic pouches in here that have the ephemera. I'm going to put a pouch of book paper, a pouch of music paper, tissue paper, different collage papers that I might be storing in my filing cabinet, but these are going to be closer to where I'm creating, and that is going to get me using them more. So I can have those little bits of collage paper. I could take them out of my filing cabinet and have them here, which means they will get used a lot more. There they are on that Ikea cart or rolling cart at the back. Now, normally when I create my mediums, my paints are right here because I use them the most. What I have in the cart behind are things that I don't access as much, but the stuff at the top 
I can easily access from my workspace. So I have two of those filing systems that I picked up at Walmart. This one is going to be collage papers and here are my iron decoupage sheets that I created and that can go right here. So these are mesh pouches and I have used these in the past to put my projects. So if I'm doing a Japanese theme project I might collect ephemera stamp stencils and put it in here and then it's all together when I sit down to create. But they're kind of flimsy and I really wasn't maximizing the use. But lo and behold I can put them in one of those accordion file systems and they stand up. I can get my labeler out and label them and I'm really excited about how this is just going to allow me to use these all the more. Now it's pretty obvious that I have a definite color theme. I prefer having one cohesive color and I was lucky enough to be able to source these out over the last three years, the navy teal, color and I love that and you can definitely go in a color theme but that's not really necessary. Function comes first over that. That being said there's a lot you can do in your space to add that color that you love onto your storage items. Grab a napkin, I just covered my water tub. I added a napkin to the gesso and the matte medium bottles. Covered the bin with a napkin in the color tone that I wanted. Now these stackable bins over here are white and I love them because they are stackable and it allows me to use my vertical space. I've labeled them but while I like them and they definitely serve a purpose in my studio, they weren't the color that I wanted. We have paint. It is comp so very easy to turn this plain white into this. All I did was paint on some mixed media paper, cut it to size, and then all I'm doing is sliding it in and now it's perfectly coordinated with all my bins and paint job. I even painted the clock the color that matches my shelves. Here are three of the Dollar Tree bins. But in order to stack these because they aren't stackable all I've done here is I've taken a canvas, a 12 by 14 canvas, and I've painted it the teal color, did some stenciling, I mixed media it, and now I can layer it up and take advantage of that vertical space. It doesn't take up any more room on my desktop as one bin, but now I have three bins. You'll notice in my space, in order to easily clean up and also keep my desktop relatively clear, I have bins that I've labeled work in progress or to be filed. Recently I added another bin here for temporary storage. So after I use a stamp or stencil, I just throw it in that bin. And then once it's full, that's a signal that I need to take the time and put it back in the correct place. I've kind of talked about this and you've seen that most of my supplies are labeled. I could not believe what a difference it made when I started labeling my envelopes, my bins. I have saved so much time in locating the items and cleaning up and putting them away at the end. 
This is invaluable. This is the Brother P Touch. I bought it at Staples, but I will link it online if it's there. Now, the tapes, instead of using the brand name, I use kind of a no-name brand off of Amazon, and they work extremely well. I don't notice any difference, and the price point is way friendlier, and I don't have to worry about the cost of labeling. So let's see how it all fits together. But because the whole purpose was to get our mixed media supplies within easy reach of where we create, I'm going to take this video from the vantage point of the chair that I sit in at the table. So right in front of me, I have my shoe organizer that sits on the table that allows me to have extra storage right in front of me. So I have my prompts, my art journal process cards, my pick a prompt, which is a new digital download that I'm going, that I'm getting ready. I've got my color scheme cards, all, anything that's going to prompt my work is right in front of me. Back here, I've got splatter paint, distress crayons, jelly roll, neo color twos, all neatly stacked. Those are Dollar Tree containers. My brayers are right there. I use them on my art journal pages. Down below, I have my DIY stamps and my five by seven gel plate. I have my ink pads right here, and I've got fluid acrylics. They're there because I don't have a better space for them, but I'm more likely to use them because they are right in front of me. Up top, I have a bin that I've put a napkin on. I've got my scissors, palette knives, my mediums, my gesso, black paint, white paint, as well as fluid matte medium. And I can just grab this in the container, bring it down to my workstation and put it up there. By putting it in this little container, I'm saving the top of this. It's not getting painted and marked up. Right here, I have all my sentiments organized in the plastic envelopes. Up above, I've got some visual eye candy on the art shelf. I also have my molds and clay, which I don't use often, but it's there and it's visual, which means I am more likely to see it and use it. My paper towel roll, and I have a place for my coasters, my round coasters and my square coasters that I use in my art. To my immediate right, I have two rolling carts. The first one has most of my color mediums and things that I use very regu regularly when I'm creating. Typically, I pull the cart out and it sits just going to move my chair back here. At the top, I have the things that I use the absolute most, my acrylic paints, all swatched out and ready to go. Down below on the next level, I have all my mediums, modeling pastes, gel mediums, gesso, gold modeling paste, what have you. On the other side, I have mark makers that I use when I create art journaling. I have more mark makers that I use with my gel plate, but those are stored in the big cupboard. Down below, I've got some sprays. And at the very bottom, I have my stamping platform, my guillotine cutter, and my envelope maker. In the bin, using one of those towel bars, I have my makeup sponges, blending foams that I use, again, almost every page. My Murphy's Oil Soap just clips on there, and my water spray. So over here is another rolling cart, and it's further back, but the top part is really easily accessible from my chair. And this is something new. What I've done here is I have set up basically a collage paper center. Now, some of this is stored in the filing cabinet, 
but I have samples or small bits of it all here. So I have all the collage papers labeled with colors, my iron decoupage sheets, tissue paper, music paper, book paper, vintage printables. I also have some in those mesh pouches, projects on the go. So if I'm putting together a project, I might pull different things, a napkin, a, a stamp, a stencil, and put it in there. And I've done some of the planning. And then when I come to sit down and do a video for you guys, that's where it all is. In the middle here, I have my Canson Mixed Media Art Journals that I've taken off the coil. I've got two sizes here, so when I want to use them, I just pull out one page and bring it to my work table and away we go. Down below, I have my embossing supplies. I've got some tags, my punches, empty bottles at the very bottom. These bottom two shelves I don't use often but they are here and they are easily accessible just one step away from my workstation. So that was to the right. Over there I've got my heat tool, I've got my pens in that bin, my water container, as well as my brush uh, organizer that I got from Dollar Tree. Up above, I have now a bin with small substrates, five by seven, six by four canvas panels, six by six mixed media boards, um, my composition books, small substrates that I might use. And I love having those there because I can easily grab them. I don't have to get out of my chair anymore. My mini iron and Parchment paper is in the bin right there, so I can grab it. It's easy. I can bring it there. More eye candy above. It allows me to display my art journals, and I can swap it out without putting extra holes in, in, in the walls, which my husband loves. Over here, I've got my laser printer, a bin for paper bits, so I can stamp on or use for whatever purposes that I want. I, in here I have various kind of office supply stuff, fasteners, adhesives, double-sided tape, all labeled. These again are bins that I've used elsewhere in my studio. They're all from Dollar Tree. So they're inexpensive, but they work really well in here. And at the bottom, I just have my copy paper and 11 by 17 paper as well as rice paper my paper supplies so as i'm moving along here is my second workstation there i have some of my diy journals my accidental art journal um, things that i can pull out should i want to create in them my work in progress or to be filed, stackable. This allows me to edit my videos with my laptop here. We have some stackable bins here. And this is kind of a catch-all. These are things that don't fit anywhere else. They're kind of one-ofs. It's kind of temporary storage, but it's self-limiting because as soon as it's full, I got to deal with it in some way, shape or form, either use it up, get rid of it or file it in a more permanent place. But it's easy to get. And because these bins are stackable, it allows me to make use of vertical space. So I am still on my chair, turning around from my workstation. So up here we have another art shelf with some more eye candy. I've got a bin for napkins. It's kind of a temporary storage for napkins until they get back into the um, binders. I've got some blank journals, tags and cards here or some that are in the process of being created as well as I have my card making blanks all here. So when I want to create on a card, I can just grab those out. Now down below, and it's going to be hard to get a picture of this, sorry for that, we have two rolling carts. 
So here is my workstation, my chair. So I just have to turn around on my chair and I have at my fingertips pretty much all my stamps and stencils as well as some color mediums. So I'm just going to move a little bit closer. Again, every cart is arranged with what's at the top is what I use the most. That pretty much I hit every single time I'm creating. So I have the stamps that I use the most in these plastic envelopes that I absolutely love. They're approximately, I can't remember the measurements, sorry, but I've labeled them. Even though they have a space to be labeled down below, I've labeled them at the top with my P-Touch, which is an absolute must-have in the studio, and it allows me to very easily go through and find what I'm looking for. So I've either, either labeled it by the brand or the theme of it, and it just makes it easier for me to find. Down below I use, I've got my Julie Nutting stamps, my Crazy, crazy Birds, um, Crazy Cats, Crazy Dogs, stamps that I use second, secondary. And down below I've got stamp blocks and foam stamps that I don't use as much, but they're all there together. And then my new bin, my temporary storage bin, where I'm going to put stamps and stencils after I use them, getting them off my work table, and then I can, from there, I can easily put them back in. Now on the other cart, we have my, some of my stencils. So I have the slimline stencils, my six by six stencils. That's what's in here. These are scrapbook binders that I've gotten from Michaels. There's a lot of pages in there. So I have mine. I have some rice paper here, more stencils, and I have a binder of my sentiments. Right handy, these are all the different sentiment packs that I have created and are available at Ninny's Napkins. And I can just flip through this, find the right sentiment, and then go look in, I'm going around, these pouches where I might have it printed off in the size that I want. So the sentiments is about word. Down below, I have some stamp sets that are kind of card making stamp sets. They have some sentiments on them. I've got letter stamps and my wooden letter stamps. And this is in a bin. I can just pull the bin and bring that to my workstation and then it goes back. So that's the benefit of getting the bin. Down below, I have my very loved Inktense blocks, Inktense pencils, saran wrap, parchment paper, and my baby wipes. Easily accessible right behind where I create. So I'm sitting in my chair in front of my workstation. And about two, three steps, I have my filing cabinet, and there's the door to my studio. So what I keep in the filing cabinet are a lot of the paper supplies. Now, I am trying something new. We talked about it over here. I'm set up a mini collage paper center where I have some of all the different collage papers that I might work with, but the rest of them are stored in the filing cabinet. The filing cabinet holds a lot of product and you can, and I did it at some point, use the bins in here as well. So color coordinated at the back there, I have my gel prints and collage papers. These are the full sheets that I might use as Insta backgrounds along the way. Then in the middle here, I have in some of the larger plastic pouches, themed, they are, they're templates, there are printables, calendar pictures, magazine pictures. Then I also have uh, some of the scrapbook, the remains of some of the scrapbook pads that I've had in the themes. I've got magazine pictures here as well. 
Up here is the Pendaflex system. Now this folds up. Let me see if I can and can be taken with you on a create date. But in here, I have opted right now to make use of the vertical space and put my colored coffee filters in there. On the bottom, I have the sticker paper. I have the twisted paper, stencil material, the bulk of the book paper, music paper that I've gotten from the thrift store. Some of my master boards are in here. Lots of paper products that's really heavy. I don't access this often, and often what I'm planning on doing is taking stuff out of here and putting it in my mini collage center now and increasing the ease. I also store all my excess mesh pouches you can see right here and some of the leftover plastic envelopes. I told you I buy these bulk and I have them at the at the ready because I use them in so many places in my studio. Right here I have a plastic bin that hold some of my wooden or larger substrates. Often I, when I'm deciding to create, I want to addition the napkin or the printable with a particular substrate to make a decision of which size I want. And having at least one of them handy really shortens the process. I don't have to leave my studio to go and get them. Down below, I have my recyclables, my what's in the bin. I have a series right now, what's in the bin, where I use stuff that I've saved from the recycle bin and I use it to create art or I use it in the art studio. Again, it's self-limiting. I cannot exceed that box. That is a banker's box. I cannot exceed that with recyclables that I'm using in my art. If I need to add something to it, I need to either do another video for you guys or get rid of something more permanently. But I am limiting myself to what I can fit in that box. Now there is my desk, the rolling carts, and here is my, whoops, big cabinet. Now what's behind the door? That's my gel plates, my big mark makers, other craft supplies that I do not access regularly. And I talked about the things that are in the front because it's a really deep cabinet are the things that I use more often than the things that are in the back. Up top in this area, I have all my binders that hold the napkins. All the blue binders are napkins and my white binders or the light aqua ones are printables that I have. Again, I've labeled them, I've organized them in a way that makes sense to me. And then that makes it easy to find them and use them. Up top, I have more display area for more journals, more of my artwork, but Behind here, I have some storage containers. Again, I had these. These are things that I do not access often at all. It allows me to put art up high so I get to see more art, but it also makes use of this vertical space. So we've come to the end of my video. I hope that you have found at least one idea that you can run with and incorporate into your studio. Let me know what that is down below in the comment section. Remember, I've linked some of the products in Amazon if I could find them. Now go get organized.